morning guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another micro struggle. Today we're talking about compensating and equivalent variation. The idea behind compensating and equivalent variation is we're trying to measure the impact to a consumer's welfare of a price change. The easiest way to interpret such an impact of a price change in someone's welfare is to try to measure that impact in terms of dollars. So compensating and equivalent variation we're trying to put a dollar value of the impact to someone's utility or someone's welfare of a price change. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get started with a motivating example. So here is our motivating example for compensating equivalent variation. We have Bill, Bill likes Pepsi and Chipotle. And right now we're gonna say that Bill likes to consume Pepsi and Chipotle together in fixed amounts. We call that perfect complements. His utility is 10 times the number of bundles where a bundle is one Pepsi and one Chipotle bowl. And so before we have a price change, if Bill faces the prices of $2 for a Pepsi and $10 for a Chipotle bowl, he's got $60 in his wallet and a bundle costs $12. He can afford five bundles. We put five into that utility function and Bill has a utility of 50. After the price change, maybe Bill has decided to grow his hair out a little bit. And after this price change and after Bill lets his hair grow out, the price of Pepsi is $5 and the price of Chipotle remains at $10 and Bill still has $60 in his wallet. Well, now Bill can only afford four bundles, so his utility is 40, and you can see that Bill's utility has gone down after this price change. So for compensating variation, the idea is we're going to ask, well, what if you tried to get Bill back to his original utility of 50? Well, what you could do is you could hand Bill a $15 bill, and if you hand Bill a $15 bill, then he has $75, he can afford five bundles again, and so his compensating variation is 15 because if you want Bill to get back to his original utility, you're gonna to have to pay him $15. So we would say that the impact to Bill's welfare of this price change is $15 measured using this compensating variation. We could say, well, what if you took away $12? Then this $60 would become $48. Bill could only then afford four bundles and he would be at the same utility as he got to after the price change. So that's what we call equivalent variation. And we could say that, well, Bill would be willing to pay up to $12 to avoid this price increase because after the price increase, his utility is going to be as if he only had $48 if he faced the original prices. So that's the idea with compensating and equivalent variation. Before we move on to those other two example problems, I just want to take a quick second and go over my personal memory trick to remember compensating versus equivalent variation. So compensating variation is new prices, old utility. I'm trying to get back to the old utility level using the new prices. Equivalent variation is the opposite. I'm using old prices to try and get to the new utility. So again, if you have something that works better for you, by all means, but this is what works for me, and maybe it will work for some of you as well. Let's jump into our next example problem, where instead of perfect complements, we're gonna use perfect substitutes, where here, instead of Pepsi and Chipotle, it's between Pepsi and Coke, or two different sodas. Before the price change, the price of Pepsi is $2, the price of Coke is $1, and our price change in this example is gonna be the price of Pepsi doubles to $4. And both before and after the price change, we have $10 in our wallet. And so we're just once again going to find our initial utility, the utility after the price change and we're going to ask ourselves how we could go from one to the other in order to find our compensated and equivalent variation. One thing to remember about perfect substitutes is that we can't do this MRS equals the ratio of the prices. Instead we set up this bang for buck equation where the margin utility of Pepsi over the price of Pepsi is compared to the margin utility of Coke over the price of Coke. And if it's greater than we're only buying Pepsi. If it's less than we're only buying Coke. And if they're exactly equal, we just need to spend all our money. It doesn't matter how much Coke or how much Pepsi we buy. Just something to keep in mind for this example. And unsurprisingly, the two questions we're going to ask in this example are to find the compensating and the equivalent variation. As I alluded to, as we saw in that motivating example, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the optimal bundles both before and after the price change so that we can calculate our utility both before and after the price change. So before the price change, we see that the marginal utility of Pepsi over the price of Pepsi is five over two. The marginal utility of Coke over the price of Coke is just two over one, which means we're only buying Pepsi. How much Pepsi can we buy? Well, we have $10, Pepsi costs $2, so we can buy five Pepsi, and we're not buying any Coke. So if I plug the utility of five Pepsi and zero Coke into our utility function right here, you can see that my utility is going to be 25. Now, after the price change, we have that the marginal utility of Pepsi is still five, the marginal utility of Coke is still two, but now the price of Pepsi is four and the price of Coke is one. 
So now we are only going to buy Coke. So we're going to buy zero Pepsi. How much Coke can we buy? Well, we have $10. The price of Coke is $1. So we could buy 10 Cokes. And the utility of that bundle 0, 10, based on our utility function, is 20. So if I summarize those results, before the price change, we have a utility of 25. We're buying 5 Pepsi and 0 Coke. The price of Pepsi was 2 and the price of Coke was 1. And after the price change, we have a utility of 20. We're buying 10 Coke. The price of Pepsi was 4 and the price of Coke was 1. So for the compensating variation, we said we want to get back to the old utility at the new prices. And notice that we have a gap of 5. The difference between our before and after utilities is 5. And because we're using the new prices, we're only buying Coke. So if we figure out how much Coke we would need to buy, we can figure out how much money we need to give Bill in order to compensate him for this price change. So if we need a utility of 5, each Coke we buy gives us a margin utility of 2. So we need 5 over 2 Cokes, and the price of Coke is $1. So if we multiply that out, then we need $2.50. That's our compensating variation. That's how much we would need to give Bill after the price change in order for him to reach his original utility of 25. For equivalent variation, we're trying to get to the new utility at the old prices. We're asking ourselves how much would Bill be willing to pay in order to avoid the price increase. Well, our gap is again five, but he can only lose or buy Pepsi because we're using the old prices where he only buys Pepsi. So we need five over third Pepsi. Pepsi costs $2 at the old prices. So his equivalent variation is 10 over three or 3.33. That's how much Bill would be willing to pay in order to avoid this price increase. Because if this price increase happens, he's gonna lose five utility. And that's equivalent to losing five thirds Pepsi at $2 a Pepsi. So notice again that these compensating variations and equivalent variations are not always equal. We're calculating them differently. We don't expect them to be equal and they're measuring slightly different things. For this second example and the last example we're gonna talk about, let's use Cobb Douglas Utility. And so maybe the utility of Pepsi Coke, maybe I like to consume Pepsi and Coke together in sort of mixed amounts. And so I'll just make it easy and say that we've got Pepsi to the one half times Coke to the one half, and that's our utility function. Before the price of Pepsi is two, the price of Coke is one and I have $12. And after the price change, the price of Pepsi is four, the price of Coke is one, and again, we still have $12. So again, this price increase is Pepsi is doubling. I'm also going to use the Cobb Douglas utility maximization problem shortcut. That shortcut just says that if I have these exponents here, then I can say that P star is one half times M over the price of Pepsi and C star is one half times M over the price of Coke. See that video that's popping up in the upper right corner about how to do a Cobb Douglas shortcut, but otherwise let's keep going. So before, Using this Cobb Douglas shortcut, I'm going to get that my optimal amount of Pepsi is 3, my optimal amount of Coke is 6, my utility is the square root of 18. After the price change, I'm going to use 1.5 Pepsis and 6 Cokes. My utility is going to be the square root of 9. Just like before, in order to find my compensating variation, I'm trying to find the amount of money that I would need to give Bill in order to get him back to utility of the square root of 18 at the new prices, given that currently he's at a utility of the square root of nine. And the easiest way I can think to do that is just to figure out how much money would Bill need at the new prices in order to get a utility of the square root of 18. Because if I can figure out how much money he needs to get that utility at the new prices, then I can just subtract whatever money Bill has actually in his wallet. And that difference will be the compensating variation. If I know that the utility I'm trying to get to is the square root of 18, and my utility function also has square roots in it, then what I can do is I can just say, if I want to get to the square root of 18 using a square root function, I can just square everything. And so I'll just get that 18 is 1 half m over 4, 1 half m over 1, because this is the price of Pepsi, the new price of Pepsi, and this is the new price of Coke. I'm just going to solve that for m. I'm going to get 17. Check my math. Comment below if you disagree with my math. And so to find the compensating variation, I'm going to take the money I need in order to get a utility of the square root of 18 at the new prices. I'm going to subtract the amount of money that I actually have in my wallet, which is 12. That's going to tell me that the compensating variation is roughly 5. I did some rounding, but it's roughly 5. Similarly, to find equivalent variation, I'm trying to get to the square root of 9 using the old prices. So 9 is just going to be equal to 1 half m over 2 times 1 half m over 1, where 2 right here is the old price of Pepsi and 1 is the old price of Coke. Once again, I'm going to solve for m. I'm going to get roughly 8. And so the difference between the amount of money that I have in my wallet and the money I need to get to a utility of the square root of 9 is roughly 4, so my equivalent variation is roughly 4. So with both compensating and equivalent variation, you find your optimal bundles, you find the utility of those optimal bundles both before and after the price change, 
you compare those utilities and you ask yourself, how can I get from one utility to the other? So for compensating, how can I get to my old utility using the new prices? For equivalent, how can I get to my new utility at my old prices? I calculate the difference between what I have and what I would need, and that tells me the impact of this price change on Bill's welfare in terms of dollars. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of both compensating and equivalent variation. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.